one image we have of entrepreneurs is, especially when they're starting out, is they like disappear and they focus only on their business 24 seven. And I think that is a dangerous habit because you're cutting off one huge source of resilience when you are focused only directly on your business, uh, one source of resilience and opportunity, which is relationships. So today I wanna to talk about making your relationships more resilient so that when things are difficult, you can weather that storm better and this does not just become one more domino in the stress that collapses and runs through your entire life. It's all too easy as an entrepreneur to feel isolated, which will then increase your mental stress, which will then bleed into uh, back into your relationships, bleed into your business, bleed into your health, etc. I'm Alex Sorensen from Ease Your Habits and I coach overthinking entrepreneurs in how to take that overwhelm and anxiety and turn it into unstoppable action. So one of the reasons why I was able to survive this summer, probably heard it in my other videos, but my wife had spine surgery. That meant she couldn't work or help out around the house or with the kids as much for a certain period of time and for a much longer period of time had reduced capacity to do so. Uh, so I was doing more with the kids, doing more chores, and the sole income. So uh, that was a potentially huge source of stress and a big strength during this time were my relationships. Now the biggest thing is actually having my mother come and help out with the kids so that I could work while doing all of this or that I could visit Meg in the hospital when she was recovering from surgery. And, um, you know, I'll, you know, had my mom, my mother-in-law come, but there were other sources of strength as well. There was my church community where uh, some people came and uh, delivered dinners. That's one source of stress off my plate. And then another source of uh, strength during this time actually is that I have an accountability partner. So I have someone, uh, a friend that I respect and admire who has different strengths than me, but kind of the same mentality about wanting to be a better person, making weekly goals, et cetera. So we sit down and talk. It was, you know, I think originally just an hour, but we tend to do it longer than that. So it bled into an hour and a half. Sometimes it goes longer, uh, but we'll take turns. So my accountability partner will talk about her goals and, and just how she's doing. And I'll ask questions or um, often, you know, reflect any patterns that I see. I don't do a ton of coaching per se in that, um, aside from those, those are both coaching things. I guess I don't do consulting or advice as much in that, um, you know, that's mostly her space. And then, you know, I take the time to do the same thing and she'll ask me questions and reflect back. And so that gives me an, an opportunity, uh, especially over the summer to where I was high stressed to talk about my stress, uh, to get in, uh, some outside perspective, to, um, to have someone ask me questions that help me think through it more. Um, and that allows me to pivot or ask for help in areas where maybe I wasn't asking for help, et cetera. And so all of those relation, like all of those relationships help more. And the other thing I did with relationships that I want to talk about is that uh, I involved my kids more in helping out around the house, right? I was spending more time with the kids and more time doing chores. So I tried to, you know, kill two birds with one stone by having them do certain things better. Um, the tricky thing, my kids are six and eight, the tricky thing with kids is very often to have them do chores, you have to train them, which takes extra effort. And then usually for quite some period, you have to, um, you have to double check um, and follow up with them. And that's why a lot of people, uh, or a lot of parents, I think, tend to, go immediately to doing chores themselves because it's easier than teaching your kid to do it and kind of supervising them for several days. However, um, you know, when I realized that this uh, spine injury, it would be months before we had a surgery and, you know, at least a month and a half of recovery after the surgery, uh, I, you know, I started to realize like, all right, uh, it's worth investing a few days into this. So one of the things I did was have my kids start making, you know, replacing their bed sheets and making their own beds, which they hadn't been doing before. Because it's quick enough to do it as a, as a result. And particularly the long, youngest one was furious 
uh, having to do this. And it was too hard. And I knew he was physically capable of it, but he didn't know he was physically capable of it. And so he would do ineffective things over and over again, not listen as I coached him and get super frustrated. Uh, and that was really uh, intense and anxious uh, or anxiety inducing uh, and anger inducing. Um, but then I realized a lot of times we as parents uh, or I lean on like discipline and motivation, telling them they have to do it regularly, i.e. discipline, you know, motivating them either by trying to bribe them or, you know, by trying to punish them for not doing something, etc. But a thing we often don't do as parents, this is just like an aside, a tip, but an often thing we don't do as parents or for ourselves is lean on the easy motivation because you're not or the the easy lover to help someone do something more often so you know discipline will not always be their motivation will not always be there they're not long-term solutions but if you make something easier then it is always easier and that's actually what i did with my youngest i actually took apart his bunk bed which took some time on a saturday but he had a lot of uh, a lot much easier time fitting the sheets over the bed um, when he didn't have to like try and shove them in between the bed and you know the kind of guardrails that they have on the bed. So um, in making it easier, he was able to do it. Since he was able to do it, he got less frustrated and now it's something he does automatically and it was one less chore I had to do over the summer. And that really helped again with relationships to kids. Now your relationships to your kids is not only extracting chore work out of them, right? So I made very specific times where they could expect some quality time from me because um, one of the things I've also observed in kid relationships is that um, if you don't, if they don't know exactly when they can have attention for you, they will be constantly asking you, is it time yet? Is it time yet? Is it time yet? Um, so, you know, that was another aspect of, of investing into that relationship so that at a time where they did feel more needy because they weren't getting the attention from their mom that they wanted, uh, I was able to have them help do chores so that I could have more free time with them and making sure that they knew exactly when that free time was and when I did need to work so that they could actually do their own thing and kind of train them. They're kind of young to do free play time for a couple hours by themselves. They're capable of it um, so that I could get work done but they would be confident that, you know, at, at four o'clock or whatever, I would be able to sign out for a little while and help them before doing dinner and et cetera. So, um, so relationships were huge for me over the summer. How can you make your relationships more resilient? Um, actually, you know, it's kind of trite, but uh, there was an old uh, Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints infomercial or what do you call those in like not infomercials but those like public service announcements psa's there you go um you know i would say family isn't it about time but that's the number one thing right having time uh particularly quality time so you want to schedule that in pe time when people know they're going to have your full attention and then you know i i basically had that in all areas so i talked actually about how meg and i established a time for a morning check-in to communicate and that really helped us recalibrate post-surgery into like what we're doing next and how we're working together as a couple and getting ready for that school year for the kids etc so um you know making time for that you know i make time to go to church uh, so with my mom that uh i probably should talk to my parents more regularly make a more regular time to do that but i do try and keep up and reach out at least you know a few times a month and i had been over the summer keeping up with my mom letting her know of the issues uh meg was having so that when we had surgery particularly when the surgery was moved up a couple weeks because we got a slot earlier which was a miracle um that you know she was able she was, she was already thinking in terms of taking vacation out to help us and she was ready to do that because like the communication channel was open i really appreciated that so uh and you know meg's mom of course came as well which was fantastic and then um you know i have my accountability partner we have a standing time to talk to each other uh, each week and so what i found is that, like basically the people that i had made time regular time to reach out to 
or had regular time to be involved with or help out, you know, I'd invested regularly into those relationships. Those are the ones that flowed immediately back to helping me when I was stressed. And so if you're an entrepreneur and you're cutting out all of your connection time, you know, maybe it's time to reconnect. Again, you know, start small. I normally recommend for people with habits, you know, start with five minutes a day or something. It can be hard to have a five minute conversation with someone, right? If you call someone up, <laughs> they probably, and, and they're available to talk to you, they probably wanna to talk to you for more than five minutes. So it's something that comes a little bit better in terms of the calls uh, in at least half hour increments. But the other thing you can do for five minutes is just like reach out and text someone a thank you or thinking of you message, right? Do that five minutes a day to kind of um, keep ties with people. And then I recommend it's not just that you do that for different individuals every day, although that's not a bad thing to do, but you have touchstones in your life where you are regularly able to um, see the same people where you're able to like help out or give to them or be supportive in some way. Um, and that allows you uh, to really get um, to be supported when things become stressful for you. And so uh, one of the reasons why uh, my business was able to keep going and didn't collapse when we had this health stress and stress that took me away from a lot of the intermittent relationships that I had is that I had a lot of long-term permanent standing relationships uh, with people who knew what I was going through and were ready to help me out when I needed it. So um, it's pretty simple, just make regular time and you can you know, do a combination of breadth, meaning you know, quick notes or a note to a different person every day, but then some people that you call once a month, once a week, whatever it is, to really keep in touch, have a deeper relationship uh, with and then that can be your support during difficult financial times if I my parents hadn't been here For example, I wouldn't have been able to work I wouldn't have been able to really capitalize on getting a new referral starting up joint ventures, etc to get other referrals so um, That you know that is there was a direct Relationship between my ability to perform in my business and the social support that I got so this is very powerful Don't be isolated as an entrepreneur Investing in the social systems in your life is a hugely important part. You do want to make sure if you have a family and you're an entrepreneur, that can take up almost all of your life. And you do want to invest regular relationships with your spouse, with your kids. Um, but you also want to find, you know, once a week, once a month, find the right cadence, but have regular interactions with other people that you can support when times are good and that can support you when times are difficult. So I hope this has inspired you to get in touch with an old friend, at least, you know, start, at least contact one person, but you might find that there are some people that are worth talking to regularly and there's some people that are open to it. I recently had an old friend from college who is creative, I'd read some of his creative stuff, um, who was going through a work transition, reach out to me, and which is a great, fantastic thing to do when you have like a change point in your life and you're like, life is already interrupted. Like take a look at like, wait, who haven't I been talking to in a while? And use that like transition period to, to reconnect. But then, you know, I realized I enjoyed talking to him and I've always enjoyed talking to him. And so maybe we would, you know, I actually for now have two accountability partners. I talk to them actually about different things. Um, and he has more of an insight into media and media production. And he's the one that challenged me to do this daily video. You never know what's going to happen. It might be someone, it might be a one-off experience. It might be that one-off experience leads to something later on, or it might be someone that you really enjoy talking to and want to talk to regularly on a weekly basis that does become one of those bigger social supports for you. So as an entrepreneur, don't isolate yourself. Do not neglect your relationships. You can start investing in them in small increments. And as always, Make big changes, one small habit at a time.